not warfare, not politics, and even before negotiation must this be fulfilled. Three steps to resolve the Palestine-Israel conflict. Now, before talking about the solutions, it's important to know how this conflict even came about. For centuries, Jews, Christians, and Muslims coexisted in Palestine in harmony under the Ottoman rule. But in other places, of course, as we know, the Jewish people were facing severe persecution. Enter Zionism and Zionists. These were basically Jews with a geopolitical agenda and who wanted a land for their people. Come 1914 and World War I breaks out. This war was between the central forces, which included Germany and the Ottoman Empire, and the Allied forces, which included Great Britain, France, and Russia. Now, once the Allied forces, they'd won the war, a mandate system was put in place which saw the lands governed by the central forces shift to the Allied forces until they could be given independence. Now, Palestine was among them. But here, independence was not the motive. You see, in 1917, during World War I, the Balfour Declaration was issued, which was essentially an announcement by the British to find a national home for the Jewish people. Now, these words, national home for the Jewish people, were very ambiguous. They were unprecedented. So people took different meanings. Some understood them to mean a plot of land for Jewish people within Palestine, while others took it to mean a Jewish state. Nonetheless, Jewish people began migrating en masse to what became the British Mandate for Palestine. In 1948, exhausted from World War II, the British left Palestine and the State of Israel was declared. And since then, the local population has been in an almost constant state of conflict. Now, there are various moving parts, of course, to this story since. For example, you have the Nakba, the catastrophe, which saw more than 700,000 Palestinian Arabs being displaced and driven out of their homeland in 1948. And between 500 to 700 Palestinian villages uprooted. Major conflicts break out in 1948, in 1956, in 1967, 1987, and 2000, before, of course, the recent ones of 2021 and October 2023. Now, moving on to the solution. One of the most crucial steps towards solving this issue is for both sides, particularly Palestine, to find a diplomatic voice to represent all Arab Palestinians. Hamas disagrees with the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the PIJ. Both of them don't want to stand behind the Palestinian National Authority, the PNA. So unless there is one spokesperson, the Palestinian voice won't carry any value in the international political theater. Once there is a unified voice on both sides, there should be negotiations through diplomacy regarding the future of both peoples. Till now, there have been efforts towards this, but they've unfortunately been short-lived. And the fact is that escalation in tensions has only led and will continue to lead to the loss of innocent lives. The next step is for nations around the world to encourage talks for ceasefire as opposed to providing arms and weaponizing the two nations and fairness in dealing with the two nations. This is absolutely key. The disparity in treatment is becoming more and more apparent to the world, and particularly now through social media, is the disparity becoming more and more evident. What's more is that media outlets and social media giants, they've used their platforms to silence and censor support for one group, all the while allowing for the propaganda of the other side to be seen without any censorship whatsoever. The war crimes being committed and basic human rights being neglected is absolutely appalling and atrocious. So there needs to be fairness and justice in treatment. The third step is prayer. The situation now, unfortunately, has become so dire that only Allah can help this situation get better. It's gone on for far too long, and the longer it is left, it seems that the more challenging it will be to resolve this conflict. The Holy Quran very clearly states, in Surah Al-Anbiya. And already have we written in the book of David, after the exhortation, that my righteous servants shall inherit the land. Herein surely is a message for people who worship God. A Muslim must remember that the only condition to be a true inheritor of this land, which is the Holy Land, is to be among the Qawmin Abidin, the true servants of God. Not warfare, not politics, and even before negotiation must this be fulfilled. Effectively, the only way to be a true rightful heir to the Holy Land 
according to the verdict of the Holy Quran, is to be a true servant of God. This has been the message of the Ahmadiyya Khilafat, and this alone is something that can lead to a solution.